Hey Year 12, this video will focus on the religious depth study of Islam. It will explore the significant person of Sayyid Qutb. This video is designed to provide a summary of the key ideas surrounding Qutb and his influence on Islam. Hopefully, this will assist you in making connections between the different components of content and their relationship to the Board of Study syllabus outcomes. Firstly, it is essential that you understand the purpose of this study. The Board of Studies syllabus states that you need to be able to complete the following. Explain the contribution to the development and expression of Islam of Sayyid Qutb. Explain, which means re relate cause and effect, make relationships between things evidence, provide why and how. This requires you to be, um, this requires you to come to an understanding of Qutb and his overall goals and how these goals have helped the development and expression of Islam. Achieving this outcome will enable you to access the requirements of the second, which is to analyse the effect of Sayyid Qutb on Islam. Okay, if we recognise that analyse is to identify components and the relationship between them, we're looking at the components of Sayyid Qutb and Islam. Alright, so this means that you are able to look at how his goals and actions have impacted both positively and negatively on Muslims, as well as how Muslims are perceived by non-Muslims. So if we begin by taking a look at Qutub's background, we can get some insight into why he had such strong views and opinions regarding Islam and its place in the modern world. He received a traditional Muslim education. This is important to note because it highlights the integral role that Islamic beliefs and practice played on his life from a very young age. It is therefore easy to understand the value that he placed on his faith. This is further enhanced by the fact that he had memorized the Quran by age 10. He was, high, he was a highly educated man and extremely knowledgeable about his faith and the words of Allah as presented through the Quran. He then went on to teach in the secular education system. Secular meaning a system of public education in countries with a secular government, that is, one where government and religion are separate. This is interesting to note because it is the, this kind of separation that Qutb felt needed to be abolished in order to achieve what he refers to as true Islam. He was sent to the USA on a scholarship and was extremely dissatisfied with what he saw. As, as a secularized country, he feared the impact of the West on Islam. This experience could be viewed as the trigger, as he began writing, and it was his writing which criticized the American and Western way of living that provided his primary source of influence or impact on the development and expression of Islam. Qutb was also a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, an organization that is still around today, it is considered a revolutionary movement that advocated the return to true Islam through the Quran and Hadith, that is, the words of Allah and Muhammad, Muhammad being someone who was seen as a model for Muslim life. Qutab became chief editor for the Muslim Brotherhood newspaper. So he began to occupy a significant role, and with this came the opportunity to communicate his views. Of primary concern was ending the separation between religion and state. This was a practice that was and continues to be evident within the Western world. And Qutb saw this as being opposite to true Islam, which he felt could only be achieved by a world which is governed by Sharia law. So what this means is that the ideals of the Muslim Brotherhood were to establish a single Muslim state, where an Islamic community, also known as Ummah, could exist in a state and society governed by Islamic law. Naturally, the Muslim Brotherhood was banned by the Egyptian government, and why wouldn't they be? Their ideals were in complete opposition with that of the government. The significance of Qutb and the Muslim Brotherhood is that it was the first social and moral reformist movement to revive Islam as a way of life. So what this means is it was not simple, simply a faith that people could uh, engage with some of the time, but it was actually a way of living. Qutb was an integral element as a brotherhood used his ideas in the ide ideology of their movement. And offshoots of the brotherhood still to this day play a role in some Muslim countries' political processes. So this explains his influence in the development and expression of Islam. 
Kuta was extremely concerned with the impact the Western world was having on the Arab world. Having been to the USA, he viewed their way of life as the complete opposite to uh, Islam and Islamic principles. Okay, and he was concerned from an Islamic perspective. So this meant that um, he was worried about the impact that these Western ideals would have on the place of Islam and that Muslim people may turn away from Islamic principles in order to abide by Western culture. So essentially anything that opposed Islamic principles, for example, separation between religion and state, communism, capitalism, etc., were a threat. So what was Qutub trying to achieve? Well, he expressed the need for an Islamic state, which essentially is a state governed by Islamic principles, one which was free from jahiliya, which is ignorance of Islam. Now, he attempted to establish the principle of Sharia law in his society. Now, Sharia law just refers to Islamic law, which guides adherence. It is a moral code and religious law outlined by the Quran, Hadith and Sunnah. So essentially the sacred text of Islam. Now um, it's important to note here that this highlights the fact that religion and state are no longer separate if they are governed by Sharia law. Okay, So essentially he wanted Islam to govern the nation. Therefore, everyone in that nation would live according to Sharia law. Islam would hold the greatest authority because Allah does. In terms, of, in terms of his significance, he attempted to inspire this thought process in others so that they would also hold the belief that Islam, and therefore Allah, would hold ultimate authority. In terms of Qutub's ultimate impact, these came primarily through his writings. And there are three books of primary concerns in which he attempted to spread his philosophy. They are Social Justice in Islam, in the shade of the Quran and milestones. Now, his writing uh, basically wrote about Islamic advocacy, all right, so the promotion of Islam, social justice, and education, all right, and all of these ideas were guided by Islam and Islamic principles. The first book, Social Justice in Islam, reflects his critical attitude towards the West. He believed that they were too concerned with materialism and had a lack of spirituality. He, he depicted the West as a new cru crusading force. Okay, So this meant that he saw them as looking to take over. He explored the persistence of gross socio-economic inequality in Muslim societies. So what this meant is that if the West took over, Muslim societies would uh, not be seen as equal in an economic sense. Islam and capitalism, as we know, are opposing forces. It focused on the need for viewing Islam as totality and demanded comprehensive implementation. So what this means is that religion and state would be combined in everyday life, so not separate, again reinforcing the idea of Sharia law. Uh, true social justice can only exist under Islam through the belief of Tawid, which is the oneness of Allah. Now, his, his writing was extremely persuasive and attempted to highlight the fact that Western culture and Islamic principles could not coexist because fundamentally they had opposing ideals and values. Now, the second book, In the Shade of the Quran, it was a commentary on the Quran and was at yeah, 30 volumes. Uh, the focus is placed on the literary qualities of the Quran, so the way it was written, as a beautiful piece of literacy. He insists that the Quran provides principles for living and that true Muslims will engage in lifelong study of it. Okay, so this just enhances the idea that the sacred texts are fundamental into the implementation of Islam in everyday life and again ties into the concept of Sharia law. Okay, to live in the shade of the Quran is a great blessing which can only be fully appreciated by those who experience it. So the idea that it is in fact self-rewarding. This book is seen as significant because it highlights the place of the sacred text, not only within the religion of Islam, but into the implementation of Islam within a society. 
Uh, just quickly, uh, we need to cover Jehilia again and recognize that it is essentially ignorance of divine guidance or the state of ignorance of the guidance from God. Okay, now Kutab saw the West as being full of this. The third book, Milestones, is probably the most influential and significant. In this book, Kutub proposes radical transformation. He wrote about how Muslims had reverted to jahiliya, so ignorance, and lived in a world that lacked Islamic thought and where the primacy of God had been replaced with people in authority. Okay, so this contradicted the idea of Allah being the source of everything and the ultimate authority. Okay, and he believed that this was occurring because of the West. Okay, now the key concept that underlined this book is that Allah is the only authority, not men. Okay, a truly Islamic community could only be guided by the Quran. So that links back to the second book, In the Shade of the Quran, and its importance. So essentially, what we need to take from this is that then he, then he wanted a focus to be on Allah as the primary source of guidance and that men having authority over other men was not okay. And therefore, the separation between government and religion was also not okay. Milestones was extremely controversial and it actually led to his rearrest. He was accused of conspiring to assassinate President Nasser. This was most likely due to the fact that the ideas he was promoting were in direct opposition to the government. It was because of this book that he was sentenced to death. And it is also this book that reveals both the positive and negative impact that he had on Islam. Why? Well, one could argue that his intentions in striving to implement Sharia law was based in his belief that it would bring about peace, prosperity, progress and justice. However, this book has also become a classic manifesto of the terrorist wing of Islamic fundamentalism. Now, if we acknowledge that fundamentalism is the rigid adherence to religious principles and often intolerance of other views and opposition to secularism, then it is understandable how the ideas presented by Kutub and those discussed earlier could be perceived as being both positive and negative. Kutub believed that Islamic policy needed no rulers other than God. Okay, the Quran and Hadith and Sunnah provide enough guidance and would not need any greater assistance. Okay, so he had this belief that if everyone followed this law, Sharia law, then there would be no need for any other authorities. Okay, and that this could spread throughout the world through preaching and jihad. All right, now jihad being the personal struggle in the light of Allah. Okay, now to bring about freedom was to fight Jahiliya with a twofold approach preaching and the abolishment of organizations and authority of the jihad system by physical power and jihad. Now, it is this idea of physical power and jihad that presented the controversy and has led to some of the more negative impacts upon Islam. For example, the 9 11 attacks. Some believe that his ideas may have been used by the terrorists responsible. And secondly, that his promotion of the destruction of Jahili Muslim governments may have roused terrorist jihad and therefore the attacking of Western countries. The effect of Sayyid Qutb was both positive and negative. Positive in the fact that he tried to affect the lives of Muslims by supporting social and cultural change. He showed a clear dissatisfaction with the status quo and encouraged change, and by doing so, attempted to guide Muslims in an ever-changing world. Now, this could be interpreted in his belief in the implementation of Sharia law and a return to Islamic principles. Um, and in doing so, this promoted the total submission to Allah, which is the core or fundamental principle of Islam. And I think what is most important about Sayyid Qutb is that he lived his beliefs, so lived what he was talking about. 
Now, on the other side, he had quite a negative impact in the fact that groups such as Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood have used his writings to justify military attacks. All right. Um, so the way his writings have been interpreted have led to a world that is, in a sense, enveloped in terror and the use of, and the use of military attacks uh, is increasing. Now, because of that, there is a negative perception of Islam, particularly within the Western society. Now, what is important to note, however, is that although terrorist actions have been closely linked with Qutub's writing, uh, terrorists use violence against civilians, and Qutub actually never promoted violence against people or innocents. So, in terms of his significance or influence on Islam, Qutub was a quite controversial figure. Now, he was executed for his views on how Islam should be applied politically, and this was most likely because he had such strong views on Islam and its place within the modern world. Now, he's viewed as both a heroic prophet and martyr, as well as a false teacher and dangerous extremist. Now, it is important to recognize that as a result of his writings, he actually had a significant impact on Muslims who returned to the faith or strengthened their resolve in Islam. Now, he also caused division and conflict between Islams because of his writings, and he is partially responsible for the negative perception of Islam religion by the West. Now, through, his, through the action of his followers, Qutub has had a key role in shaping the modern world. So, a lot of his significance is formulated around how his followers have actually interpreted his works. Okay, and that again draws focus to the fact that his writing, so his three books, Social Justice in Islam, In the Shade of the Quran, and Milestones, have actually had a significant impact on the development and expression of Islam. That wraps up our study of Sayyid Qutb. In order to consolidate your knowledge and understanding of the information presented, complete study notes on the following dot points. Explain the contribution to the development and expression of Islam, of Sayyid Qutb, and analyse the effect of Sayyid Qutb on Islam. Thanks.